is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. Last year, I was sitting at a desk as a sales manager, and now I'm official McLaren F1 simulator test driver. This opportunity is huge, huge. done six laps. Four down, one to go on the Grand Prix side of iRacing's McLaren Shadow Competition. That means today drivers have their final opportunity in the McLaren MP430 before they head themselves over for five weeks of racing in GT action. And what a place to have this final round of this part of the championship as we say welcome to Inter Lagos. Welcome then to the final part of the Grand Prix section of McLaren Shadow and welcome from myself Will Vinson and Connery Maddock. Coming in to today, this is how the championship was looking. Michael Partington, 1,095 points. Marcus Jensen, second place and Matteo Carlistani in third place. However, Connery, there is worth noting one thing. We need to put ourselves a little asterisk next to Marcus Jensen because he actually hasn't done 
a race so far this week. The other two people around him, Michael Partington and Matteo Calistani, they both have. So Jensen, should he finish here today, should move up to P number one. Yeah, he should well do. We saw his brilliant performances in the past couple of rounds. And once he gets up and running at the front of the field, then no one has really uh, given me any impression that they'll be able to catch him. So uh, I do expect, if things go well for him, that he's going to be leading uh, coming into the GT portion of this composition. But uh, it's Intel August to finish us, finish us off here for the Grand Prix side of things. And uh, what a stage historically as well, uh, being uh, one of the final rounds of the real life Formula One series. Championships have been won and lost here. Let's just hope no one has a, is that Glock moment. Yeah, we've got ourselves about two minutes left of qualifying. Let's first have a look at the track conditions. 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 55% race relative humidity. Two miles an hour wind to the north, 15 corners, 24 laps. That is what we're doing here today. That is 103 kilometers. And if you want me to divide it by eight and multiply it by five, well, you realize yesterday, Conway, that none of us can actually do math. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But looking at the metric uh, in, in terms of the track temperatures, 40 degrees there on the track temperature in Celsius, 26 degrees in the air. So the track is a little bit warm, partly cloudy, cloudy in the sky. So the sun isn't beating down fully on that racetrack, but uh, it could mean that the uh, the tires, well, they're, they're going to suffer a little bit here in Lagos. Yeah, um, it's 63, 64.375 miles for those of you who are wondering, by the way. I want to give a shout out to a couple of people, of course. Andres Wana and Andron Design for our overlay design. TV cameras, Istvan Balau, track cams, 22.com. Simon Grossman, AppGineering.com for our overlay development and live timing and scoring will be available all race long. That will be at racebot.tv forward slash timing. So, that's all the preamble done, Connery. In terms of qualifying, we'll go to the grid in a couple of moments' time, but it's Marcus Jensen who has himself hold position for the time being over Kazuki Umashima, barring anyone doing a... Well, it's not going to happen. We've got ourselves mm -hmm. 10 seconds after qualifying. Yeah, everyone's pretty much done their, uh, their two allotted laps in qualifying and uh, no one's going to be able to get themselves across the line to set a time before this session takes over right about now. So the grid is set for round number five. Yeah, let's have a look then at that starting grid for this round of the championship. And it is Marcus Jensen, pole position 110.735, Kazuki... Omashima for Radicals Online will start alongside of him on that front row of the grid. Michael Partington in third place. And then Mattia Calistani on the outside of row number two. Row three, that is Peo Stoyanov Peev. And then you got yourself Daniel Bida on the outside of third row. Fourth row, Josh Thompson and Kevin Fortman. Then row number five is Glenn Key and Manuel Domingo. Victor Preto and Jan Prezina in row number six. Row seven, Rene Augusto and Matteo Ugolotti. Carl Germington and Stefan Schmidt, row number eight. And by himself on row number nine, that is Fabrizio Gobbi. So, time to get ready to go racing. Connery, final thoughts. Oh, this is just going to set us up for, the fire, for a fantastic second half of the season. This is the last race with these McLaren MP430s. And then we move on to the McLaren GT3 uh, machine. That is going to be brilliant. We'll see new names at the front of the field. And uh, it's your combined points total in this part of the series and the next part with the two different cars. That is going to mean whether you qualify into the finals or not. Yeah, indeed so. So then we are almost set to go racing. That is a look at your grid. They are all lined up. They are all ready to go. Those lights will go on any moment now on top of the iRacing 
Com gantry and then we will go racing as we say for 24 laps those lights are on those lights are off we are storming down towards turn number one and who's going to get the jump out front well i'll tell you one thing marcus jensen almost losing the race lead there to kazuki umashima through the center rest in fact he will lose that race lead to kazuki umashima through the curve of his own so marcus jensen had a bad start from pole position and as a consequence he's now holding on for Michael Partington in third. He's in a Radicals online sandwich here is Marcus Henson and that is not the ideal start by any means for the Burst Esports driver. He has his work cut out now. He can't do what he's done in previous rounds. Just lead from the front and try to pull away. He has to fight these Radicals cars, Radical cars on the racing circuit side by side. So that is going to be the situation for the next 24 laps for Jens Numashima and Partington. We've also got Daniel Bieder as well, who has made up good positions further back from P number six into P number four right now. Josh Thompson has also gained two positions. A big loser in that start though, Matteo Calistani. Yeah, he has. Calistani's falling down the field quite dramatically down into P at number 15 after having issues at the start of this one. Let's see if we can get ourselves a replay as we're going to complete lap number one. And there is, well, that's the back end of it, of course. You probably want to see the front end of that as well. So here's a look then on board with Mattia Calistani. You can see now he's running down in P number 15. He comes down into the center S without difficulties, but then just gets tagged by oh, driver in towards the center S. And we see it happen so many times. That center S is such an unforgiving corner, Conneray. But to go back to the front of your field, Umashima's picking up the pace right now, and he's got seven tenths for a second advantage over Marcus Jensen. Kalastani skipped over the curb a little bit, coming into the terrace for the first time, just ran into the side of Peo Piev, and Piev also down at the back of the field as a result of that contact with Matteo Kalastani. So those two drivers who have been more towards the front of the field in this series now languishing at the rear uh, with damage to their machines. So they're going to have to take this, uh, take this race on the chin and then look uh, to get some practice in for that GT3 segment of this particular competition. But right now at the front of the field, Kazuki Umashima leads the way, starting from P number two on the grid, Marcus Jensen, then Michael Partington. But these guys have spread out just a little bit. DRS will be in effect this time as they head their way across the line and down onto the brakes into the center. It is all downhill, downhill from here and we've seen some major instance come, coming through there, but they all managed to get themselves through fine. And here's the first of the DRS streets here at Interlagos, down towards the DC at the line. Yeah, Josh Thompson's a driver to pay attention to as we get there, but he can't do anything over Daniel Bieder. This is going on for fourth place on track behind Dan Brazina, Victor Prato. They're scrapping for P7 and P8 on track. As what well, we've got ourselves two drivers out of the event. Peeva's out, Matteo Ugolotti is out. Ugolotti had himself that incident right at the very start of this event. He sat down on pit road. Nothing going to happen for him. But just Thompson versus Daniel Beder. This is going to shape up to be a nice little battle. And don't forget, Thompson is in the top five uh, in terms of your championship right now. So he needs good points here before we move over to GT World. Yeah, exactly, and uh, he could also be one of those drivers that actually makes a, a pretty big impact in that GT3 series. And also a name that I'm not seeing in this field right now is the name of David Williams, who is a very, very competent GT driver indeed, so he's going to lose points as a result of not participating in this one. Let's see if he can make that up in the final five rounds of the season, but up into the center S is these cars will go. Daniel Bieder still trying to defend from Josh Thompson. Thompson just has to stick close here, coming through uh, up on towards the uh, secondary straight here. DRS will be wide open for Thompson into the Desir de Lago, but he's still not close enough, but he's able to carry better speed to the corner. Yeah, as they will now work themselves through um, towards the And this sectional track here, you can overtake. I have seen people do it over the years, but it's always a risky ride trying to go around the outside as... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just have to have a little laugh um, over something. Um, but we've got ourselves, uh, battle still going on out front. Um, eight and a half times for a second between Jensen and Machine One. I've just learned something, Connery. If you're a Formula One team, don't complain about another Formula One team because sometimes it might come back to haunt you. Yeah, maybe, just maybe, as Josh Thompson decides to take a little bit too much of Gunshell coming towards the end 
of the lap. We'll lose a little bit of momentum over Daniel Bieder as a result of that one. Still within the DRS zone, though, for the Radicals online driver, so not all is lost in terms of him battling for position number four. Wide line taken in towards the center S's, though, but still nothing doing. He's just got to just wait and stay patient here. But the thing is, in a sprint race like this, well, you just can't wait too long, though. We only have 24 laps to work with. We're already on the fifth of those. Yeah, these laps will turn pretty quickly as well. It's got one of the fastest lap times on iRacing, especially for these Formula cars, as we've been having a look at uh, when we've seen with Marcus Jensen. Don't forget, you can get social with us. Use the um, Twitter handle, RaceBot TV or forward slash Racebot TV on Facebook. Stay up to date with all the things that's happening. And of course, you can also subscribe now to the iRacing eSports Network. Now, um, the reason why we keep on showing you two or three battles, because there are only two or three battles going on. One driver, though, who has stormed himself through the field so far, Stefan Schmidt, started towards the rear of this one, P number 16, now into your top 10, Connery. Yeah, that's a net gain of six positions for Stefan Schmidt. So he's finally going to have uh, at least a decent race, at least so far in this event, getting himself inside that top 10. That's a good points haul for him. The thing is, uh, Kevin Fortman right now is right on his tail. Might actually make this pass down in towards the first corner here. Fortman goes down towards the inside of Schmidt. They'll battle side by side through here. Schmidt still has a little bit of a door open but not able to capitalize and the resulting slowness coming through the uh, coming through the Santa Reses means that Ronaldo Augusto is right on the back. Yeah, but the DRS flap should save Schmidt and indeed it does. So he works himself down into P number 11. Worth noting also, Jan Brezina gained up five positions at the start. Victor Prato is going to try and do that outside line. And it's not going to work for Prato that time. But Brezina also up five places here today in that, um, well, number 12 machine. The champs are racing Carlo. Victor Prato continuing to put the pressure on. He's looking high. He's looking no low. And the reason for that one is... Brazina's now out of DRS range. That means even if Prater does get past, as the car's gone very wide, that's Josh Thompson in towards Yun Tsao. Oh, he's so close there with Glenn Key as well. Who Glenn Key manages to get himself ahead. Thompson making a mess out of the final couple of corners of this lap. But the thing is, yes, DRS to fight back now. Down in towards turn number one, outside line taken by a Thompson has to do it on the brakes they hit the anchors pretty much in identical fashion as he has a little bit of an oversteer moment coming through the center S's he'll drop back come under threat from his teammate as well as his teammate will actually lift out here and just let his teammates stay ahead yeah let's get ourselves a replay of this on board with Josh Thompson shall we oh my word it was down Yun Sal part of the track and I want to get on again that was just clipping a curve, back end steps out for him. And he almost ended up doing a little bit of Kimi Raikkonen driving. Remember that time um, <laughs> at Brazil a couple of years ago? He tried to spin the car around. Thankfully, he didn't go towards the locked gate. But we have a look again up above. And uh, this is then Glenn Key. We're going to go on board of him now. As this is him coming down in towards turn one. You're just going to see the back end of his car is going to step out. And that's just under acceleration. I think that was just a pressure um, for Glenn Key of having Josh Thompson behind too wide into the center S, remembering how twitchy these cars can be when you put in the throttle down. It's just a moment of, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm just minding my own business, a couple of seconds behind another car. All of a sudden, that car goes off, and you're immediately in a side-by-side -side battle with them. So it can catch a couple of drivers off guard when that happens. And as a result, Josh Thompson has managed to make his way back through on the positive sim racing driver of Key. But uh, right now, as it stands in this event, we've still got Kazuki Umashima right at the front of the field. 3.7 second gap over Michael Partington there. So that's a fantastic effort from the Japanese driver to get and gain that gap this early on, especially with the race this short. Marcus Jensen is about the same margin behind Partington as well. So the battle at the front of the field has spread out, but this mid-pack is still pretty tight. Yeah, and I just um, underlined there that lap, lap number seven for Marcus Jensen, 1 minute 17.740. And Daniel Bieder gained four seconds that lap. And Michael Partington um, is now four back from Umishima. Yenton's now three back from Michael Partington. And I want to have a look at the lap gaps there from Partington as well. Um, because Partington's doing okay to lap from Partington. I've got a feeling we missed something between Partington and Yenton a lap or so ago. 
Yeah, I, I might even just go trying to look for that because that gap definitely wasn't uh, that far away just a couple of laps ago. I'm just going to try and cycle things back. Oh, it was contact. Jensen had contact with Michael Partington coming down into the first corner, lap number seven of the event. And uh, Partington, I think he was just trying to squeeze Jensen a little bit too much on that inside curb. Yeah, we're going to have ourselves a replay there. This actually all started um, with Marcus Jensen um, getting himself loose down at Yunsao. The two drivers then go side by side into the center S, and that's what happened. Marcus Jensen turned around in towards turn number one. But as I say, Conrad, that all started because he had himself a loose moment down at Yunsao. Yeah, exactly. And a, a loose moment out of that corner is just going to mean that your speed is compromised down pretty much the entirety uh, of the run from Yun Sao down towards the first corner. You just see on the screen just like how that incident has happened between those two drivers. So it's put Marcus Jensen back into third place position right now. I don't know if, he's ha if he has any damage to that car. Uh, if, if anything, it's going to be down to the rear suspension. suspension. So I'm just going to keep a close eye on his lap times. He's still lapping faster than anyone out there on circuit, so I think he's fine. Yep, we've got Matteo Calistani looking down to the inside of Stefan Schmidt as they come in towards turn number one. He will get that move done. So Calistani up into 11th place. Stefan Schmidt after gaining six early on. Now down into P number 12, Glenn Key. Well, he's sticking with Josh Thompson after Thompson got past Connery, but has now got Jan Brezina, his own teammate, just behind. Yeah, and Brezina didn't really fight him when uh, Glenn Key had lost all momentum as a result of battling with Thompson. So I think Brezina is just uh, saying to Key, hey, you go and chase the Radicals and Line Driver ahead. I'm just going to stay back and uh, play rear gunner in some respects because he got Man Manuel Domingo as well on the back of his train. Same with Victor Preto. So um, Brezina, he, I don't think he's concerned about his teammate in front. He's going to be looking more in his uh, more in his wing mirror than the cars behind. Yeah, so you've got two positive sim racing cars followed right now by two champ series and cars. P6, 7, 8 and 9 on track. To go back though to Kazuki Umashima, he has a habit of doing this. When he's got that car kind of all locked in, he's all, oh, what's going on? Azuma Mishima, he had a very, very, very big twitch coming through the Cova del Sol. I thought he had almost lost it, but he managed to recover. But uh, you almost gave him the calm disc kiss there, Will. Well, yeah, uh, when I say normally when he hooks it up, I mean, he's a driver that will just drive away. Let's have a look then. Curve of the Sol. Yeah, you're right. It was a, a little twitch, but a big enough twitch. So if we didn't correct it, that could have been him out of the event. But he's 4.6 ahead now of Michael Partington. And, I mean, at this stage, Umishima has just got to keep it calm. And I said earlier that Umishima and Partington have actually both done a race this week. So if their points are better, that's great. They can actually take those points and move on. It's Marcus Jensen who's got all the pressure on him right now because Jensen has not done a race this week and he desperately needs some points. Yeah, he really does. Although... Even though he's almost tying with Partington, even with a, a race in hand before this event started, it's, it's going to mean that he's not going to have as much of a point advantage coming into the GT portion of this uh, series than he otherwise would have. So it just goes to show, if you don't get the start right, you put yourself on the back foot from lap one, this is where it can get you. Yeah, last time by a 112.923 for Marcus Jensen. He was faster than both Umishima and Partington. However, he is still two seconds back from Partington. He was two tenths of a second faster than that number three radicals and line car. He has got time. We are only at halfway distance. But what we've seen all season long, Connery, is there are some drivers, knowing it's not a full race distance, over push their tyres a little bit. Yeah, exactly, and uh, it, it, it's, it's 24 laps. So uh, as we've been saying throughout this series, this is slightly longer or, or slightly more aggressive than you would do on a f first stint of something like the World Championship Grand Prix series. Even though you do have that low fuel usage, those tires are still going to go away from you rather quickly if you decide to abuse them behind another car. Yeah, as we're just having a look then at the driver of Joss Thompson's got Daniel Beder ahead of him by half a second and he's got Glenn Key um, behind him by about half a second 
as they traverse themselves past start finish line in towards the Senares once again. Um, update on retirees, Ugolotti and Peeve are now officially classified as out of the event. All 15 other drivers are running within 22 seconds of your race leader. Let's stick at this battle going on right now because this is the closest one we've got to a battle on track. And, well, it's going to be interesting to see what Thompson does with Bida comparing their lap times. Finally, Bida, um, Thompson has been closing up to that number 11 car, the Israeli driver of Daniel Bida in the positive sim racing car. But catching's one thing, passing's another. A truck like Interlagos, you only really have two options. Yeah, Josh Thompson, he actually had a, uh, a slight moment coming into Ferradura, just sliding through the apex of the corner. And that's not going to do his tyres any good at all. But uh, in towards the final couple of corners of the lap now, you can just see visually, uh, at least to me, that he has dropped off the back of Jan Brezina over the past couple of corners. This does put him under threat from behind, though, from the likes of Glenkey, Jan Brezina as well, as we see them go through the final corner and down towards the pit straight. Uh, Glenn Key will have GRF, DRS. Josh Thompson will just get DRS there from Daniel Beder. So he can use that to defend down into the first corner. But like, Glenn Key is able to close up on the bricks so, so well. Yeah, he can. As here is a look at the two drivers coming down. Ooh. Another wiggle there by Thompson. This could allow the opportunity for Key to get past. However, the DRS flap saves Thompson the same way it saved Schmidt earlier on. Yeah, it did. So uh, the, these cars are just looking so, so twitchy. We do have uh, rather high track temperatures here. So those rear tires, especially coming out of the acceleration zones, uh, are just not going to be entirely comfortable. And oh, thank you, a little bit uh, of liberties taken with the track limits. They're actually jumping over the curb, coming into the Penarino, but into the peak of the pattern. Now we'll see if he does the same again, using the maximum allowed of the track. There we go. Two tires inside the white line. That's how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> as well this track it's worth noting here very quickly even though the track conditions themselves have been static over the course of the season to allow fairness for all the drivers competing the track conditions are not the same as the air temps which are the same so the air temp is the one that we show us on the nice um, pretty graphics at the start thanks andy Warner. but the track conditions do vary from race to race and that means of course that the grip levels are varying quite often from race to race. Yeah, exactly. And um, if you do look at the start of the session, the, the, the track already had a large amount of rubber laid down as Key will get very close into the Decida de Lago, almost running his nose right into the diffuser there of Josh Thompson. But uh, returning to my point, the, the track did have a lot of rubber laid down before practice even started. So. Uh, as that, uh, that does affect the track in some ways, affects the grip that you get through these corners. And uh, with a track like this, which is so reliant on the mechanical grip, sometimes uh, that can just uh, mean the difference of some different lines working through some of these corners and not. Yeah, Victor Preto trying to look high, trying to look low as they work towards Yun Sao once again over Jan Brezina. The thing is, he gets himself right up behind and Brezina loses it down in Yun Sao. He does and trying to pick up the throttle again, he spins even more towards the grass. So uh, just uh, rubbing salt in the wound, perhaps or rubbing salt in his own wound there was at Jan Brezina as uh, uh, yeah, it was down into Yun Sao, just on the brakes. I think there was a little bit of uh, rear axle lock up there that uh, spun Jan Brezina around. And as soon as he tried to pick up the throttle again to get back going, the, the, the tires still weren't gripping up on the rear end and spun him more towards the grass. Yeah, let's get ourselves one more look then, shall we, from our onboard camera of this University of Isabella 1 positive sim racing car. You're right, he snaps under braking. Um, but then the issue of these cars is when you're low speed, Connor, and you just slam the throttle down. Sometimes in anger, all the th back end's going to do is spin around again. Exactly. There are V6 turbos in the back of these cars with the hybrid power as well. So there is a lot of torque going through those rear wheels. And if you just slam it 100% throttle in frustration, you're, you're, you're just going to make your day even worse. Yeah. So there we are. Lap number 16 now of 24. Don't forget. Live timing and scoring is available all race long. Just visit racefield.tv forward slash timing. And after this race, in about 27 minutes, we'll also have coverage of the 2K World Cup here, live on the iRacing eSports Network. Look at the consistency. 
Kazuki Yamashima. 113-0, 113-1, 113 113-2. He's losing a tenth of a second a lap, but you expect that with a tyre drop-off. But he's just gaining every single lap right now over Partington. But Jensen has come back into the party here, and the gap is only six tenths of a second. Yeah, exactly. Just looking back at Yamashima's lap times, it's a steady trend upwards. The, the only anomaly was that number five. And from then on forwards, he's just been very, very consistent. Like you said, you do lose lap time over the uh, over the course of the race because of the tire deck, but it, it's just been in a consistent fashion. It's not been erratic at all. He hasn't gone faster one lap, slower one lap, faster than the other lap. It, it, he's just it's just been a smooth and steady curve in terms of lap times, and that is just the ideal situation when you're at the front of the field like this. Yes, as uh, having a look then on board with that driver of Marcus Jensen as he comes down towards turn number one, the center S, of course, first thing he's got to do is go past the pit straight to entry, that's what he does now, and past the start finish line, 211 miles an hour he goes. It's one of the fastest points in the entire Grand Prix season. However, historically, the lap times here have been, sorry, the top speeds here have been a little bit slow that um talks a little bit because of the high humidity but also the high altitude that this track runs at yep the air is a little bit thinner here so you can run even though you can only do like with the straight line you need the straight line speed coming out of the final corner in towards turn number one you can still run those high wings for the middle part of the lap because uh, well because the density is just a little bit lower uh, as we're at this high, high altitude but Marcus Jensen locking on to the back of Michael Partington now, and this is important in terms of the points battle. Partington leading into this one, but Marcus Jensen had the race in hand. There still could be these two at the end of the season that will be scrapping for that place to go to the finals at the McLaren Technology Centre. Yeah, and as you say, what it's going to be, it will be the driver who has got the best points from the combined Grand Prix and then GT part of our racing. And, and we could talk about this one until the cows come home. I'm sure we probably will do when we get into Sim Racing Expo because here comes Jensen. He looks down to the inside. You're not necessarily going to do it here. But what you now do is you're supposed to try and get a good run off the corner. <laughs> Marcus Jensen just didn't do that, Gonnery. He didn't. He might still have a chance into the Sea de Lago. DRS flap wide open, gesturing towards the inside. But Michael Partington is absolutely stoic. Didn't even flinch when Marcus Jensen gestured towards the inside there. That's how confident he is with his line. Yeah, as we now go on board, then Michael Partington in that Radicals on line six sideways car. As I said, we'll talk about this one quite heavily because iRacing and Racebot TV are going to Sim Racing Expo. That takes place in under two weeks' time. But the you talk about some drivers who are going to benefit. There are others that are going to struggle. The the driver that, well, I wouldn't even say the driver, the team battle, I think, is going to be really interesting, Connery. Because you realistically got Radicals versus Burst Esports. Yeah, th this is the situation. You, you, you know, even though there is only one Burst Esports car in this series, it just seems like the... Uh, the, the Radicals Online are still uh, Radicals Online still trying to take the fight to them, and why not? The, the the prize is potentially huge. That is on the line here. Even if you you get only just get into the finals at the McLaren Technology Center, it is still a big opportunity for your development as a sim racer, and also potentially getting your uh, getting a, you know foot in the door in terms of getting yourself a real life drive as well. So uh, this is this isn't a small prize that they're fighting for yet. Victor Prato right behind Glenn Key, who's right behind Joss Thompson, and what a move, what a lunge there by Victor Preto, as we're having a look on board a nose cam, coming in towards turn number four, Preto couldn't hold it around the outside of Faradora, but that was a close one, and I think now, we're into the last five, Connery, people say, okay, last Grand Prix race, we've got to make something happen. Especially if your skill set relies on, or rather your hopes in the series rely on the fact that you're good in these open wheel machines. Uh, some drivers, of course, the transferable skills, they have very good transferable skills. They can drive GT cars, they can drive these open wheel machines, but some drivers do specialize in one or the other. And the drivers that have specialized in these Formula One machines, they need to get the maximum points possible in these first five rounds and then do damage limitation in the final five. Yeah, I mean, I specialize, for example, at being useless in every single <laughs> 
um, except for maybe an IndyCar on certain tracks. But Marcus Jensen, um, three and a half attempts back, nowhere near close enough as they'll head down towards four once again. Now just three and a half laps to go. We'll go back to this battle going on. P5, six, seven. Here comes Glenn Key to the outside of the driver of Josh Thompson. Trying to do the over-under here. And this can actually give the opportunity now to Victor Prato. They all kind of stumble over each other there, Connery. But they all end up coming into Farad the same way they came in. Thompson outbroke himself in the defense coming into the Desio de Lago, but no driver was able to capitalize on that. Look how close nose to tail through the Pinarino for the 21st time. We've only got three laps to go. The next time these guys head their way across the line, Biko to Pato time, and then he's still not able to lock onto the back. And now he's under threat now from the driver of the number eight behind, Victor Prato into Yun Shao. There's uh, Thompson pushing a little bit wide coming through the final corner, and now they picked it up 100% throttle DRS for Glenn Key and Victor Preto and they got to sort it out for turn number one yeah Preto looks so he gets a better run however over Glenn Key they both look as though they're going to come over Josh Thompson in towards turn number one side by side Glenn Key Josh Thompson and again Thompson's able to hold on but now it looks like this could well be a free horse race as they come towards Jensen. four once again as Marcus Jensen has got himself past Michael Partington will go back and have a look at that one in just five seconds time nothing changes actually Glenn Key will actually get himself the move and Thompson's Ooh. off for the second time in today Victor Prater will capitalize as well, or at least attempt to around the outside of Ferradura, but Thompson slowed through the apex, allows Prater to get back under him for the next right hand. <laughs> fantastic stuff, fantastic racing in this mid pack, but they're uh, gonna just sort themselves out just for now. But I don't think this one is over by any means. Prater has been looking racy all throughout this event. Manu Domingo, Manuel Domingo, sorry, has got himself back onto the back of this train as well. Here comes Prater now down towards the inside, potentially at Yunsa. No, this does not go for the move. Two laps to go next time. Yeah, there's a look. We'll get ourselves one more in towards turn number one from our aerial coverage. That was Marcus Jensen storming down to the inside of Michael Partington. Just looked as though that Partington had an anchor on his rear as they worked through um, the start finish straight. But Jensen has already pulled out a seven tenth of a second advantage. Partington back down into third place. So you, it's been all changed through that oh. side of the field as Prato. That's a bit of a block. That looks a little bit naughty there. That was a little bit naughty, but into the Desilla de Lago, they will go. Prato has his teammate behind. Don't, doesn't have to worry too much about looking in his wing mirrors now. He can focus his eyes ahead on the Radicals Online driver that has already lost a position over the past couple of laps, and he might cause him to lose more. Very wide entry in towards the right-hander, in towards the Pinarino as well. Hug that inside line all the way around and set yourself up for the run for up into the Pico Tapato. You can dive yourself there down the inside there if you are very very brave i think this is going to be a last lap fight to the death yeah it will be so your top three are on the left hand side of your screen because a white flag is out umashima leads by 7.7 .7 over marcus jensen michael partington is a second behind that mattia calistani and manuel domingo big crash calistani's out and here comes Preto as well over Josh Thompson down the pit straight. We'll get that slipstream DRS pass into the first corner. But that is a huge, huge crash behind. Calistani will drop himself back down through the field after a tangle with Manuel Domingo coming up through the final couple of corners. And Domingo, uh, I don't know what to make of that situation. Just drifted towards the right-hand side of the track and just tagged Calistani around heavy into the barrier. Yeah, there's nothing that can be done. There's a replay then of Victor Prato. He goes to the outside in towards turn number one and he manages to make the move stick. He had enough overspeed there to do that one without into them. But let's go back then to Kazuki Umashima. He's only got now one corner technically to go as he works himself then towards pit entry, towards the start finish line. Kazuki Umashima will be your winner here in an action-packed McLaren Shadow event. 
absolutely brilliant drive, getting that pass turn on the race start and managing to pull out a seven second gap over Marcus Jensen right at the end there. Daniel Bido will head his way across the line for P number four. Glenkey and Victor Preto will head themselves across the line for, P for fifth and sixth respectively. Looking further down the field though, we, uh, well, we almost had a battle between two teammates there, Carl Germanton and Stefan Schmidt, but they'll head their way across the line right about now together and then they'll finish p number 11 and 12 respectively yeah indeed so we were going to try and see whether we can show you um what happened at the start of this one with kazuki umashima it looks like we can't just yet so we'll try and get to that point as soon as we possibly can if it is at all possible yes it is I've just been a little bit stupid, so we should be, <laughs> there we are, we should be able to do so any moment now. Um, so in the meanwhile, let's just do something and let's show you your final race results here from Interlagos. What a race it has been. Kazuki Umashima wins by almost seven seconds over Marcus Jensen. Michael Partington, third place, Daniel Bida in fourth. Glenn Key, Victor Preto, Josh Thompson. Kevin Fortman, Manuel Domingo, and Renato Augusto, they round out your top 10. Then, to cycle it back a little bit further, Carl Gervington in 11th, Stefan Schmidt 12th, Fabrizio Gobbi 13th, Mattia Calastani 14th, Jan Bazina um, in the 15th position. Two Central Eastern European drivers off them, um, or having incidents here today, Bazina. Um, in the number 12 car, and then Peeve, of course, out of the event. Matteo Ugolotti out of the event as well. Let's actually now show you once again the start of this one for you here today. And I want to have a look, if possible, on board with Kazuki Umashima because we didn't have the opportunity. Here we are. He just gets a better launch um, from the start in towards turn number one. I mean, he holds that inside line and then you can see the drama going on behind but Umashima just gets a better run for the curve of the song. I think something that really really helped uh, Umashima as well is the fact that P number two starts on the left hand side of the circuit so that's the preferred line into turn number one so all is uh, all that's required to get yourself ahead into turn one if you're starting P number two is just to get a decent launch bring it alongside and then you have the inside line for the first turn but the thing is saying that Umashima didn't quite complete it, at least at the start of the San Areses, but was able to hold on for the inside line through the Curve del Sol and then secure the position. Yeah, having a replay at Stefan Schmidt, who's your biggest starter here today as well. Well, that is, and we are going to have to be quick here, unfortunately, all we have got time for because, well, mm -hmm. Conry, it's been an action-packed race, but we've still got more racing to go, and that will be in the 2K World Cup starting in exactly 14 minutes' time. Exactly. Well, we, we, we better wrap up quickly then. It's going to be yourself and Jake Sperry taking, uh, taking the audience through that one. I have to be off and uh, doing stuff in my personal life, so uh, I hope you guys enjoy that. Well, yeah, in the meanwhile, all we want to do is very quickly say thank you to the following people once again. They are Iswan Balao, TrackCams22.com, Andres Tuana and And One Design for our overlay design. Development done by Simon Grossman, AppGenering.com, and of course, live timing and scoring. As ever, that has been supported by Nick Thyssen. So that is it for the Grand Prix side of things. The next five races, they are all going to be about GT racing. We're halfway through McLaren Shadow. There's a long way to go. And based upon this action-packed race, there's still a lot more fun, excitement, and drama to go as well. Good night from Interlagos.